Welcome back to The Nation and welcome to our media panel, listener columnist Bill Ralston and advertising executive David Walden. Welcome to you both. Morning. Now, Radio Live's afternoon hosts have caused, uh, well, a fair bit of outrage this week over their comments about rape. Here's a clip of them talking to a caller, Amy, about the West Auckland gang that calls themselves the Roastbusters. But, you know, as the pressure comes on, um, a lot more girls who uh, might have consented, who are identified, might well, have, might well just line up and say that they were raped as well. So you've yeah. got some that, you, you, and you, out of your own mouth, you, you've got some that you say were raped and some that went consensually, right? Just one of uh, a number of comments that were considered uh, offensive. Yes. Bill, if I can bring you in here, I'm yep. not really in a position to comment as I work for the opposition, but what do you make of this? Well, um, it's been appallingly handled, frankly, by Radio Live. I mean, there is no doubt that JT and Willie are, in my opinion anyway, misogynists and quite sexist. Their attitudes are not um, what should have been on air. They should have apologised uh, straight away yeah. and, and wholeheartedly. That was a very half-hearted yeah. apology that they did. The radio station should have stood them down for a period, perhaps yeah. two to three weeks, as punishment. And then they may have found that the advertisers that are uh, pulling their, 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 their ads off um, mightn't have actually done that, had that been the case. And there's a big ad advertiser, oh, you've got uh, Telecom, uh, ANZ, Briscoes. Uh, uh, big names, I mean a, a virtual who's who of New Zealand business that mm. was advertising across Radio Live. And I think what you've got to understand is people buy into programs, and yes, okay, Gillian, Willie and JT were supposed to be a bit edgy and maybe they polarised, but this goes beyond the pale. This is, they crossed a line, and no company wants to be involved in a scandal and and things about rape of underage girls. I mean, no wonder everyone, and certainly any client that I'm involved with, I recommended get out of it as fast as you possibly can, and they did. Bang. They were out of They Those guys are still on air with a three-hour show with no advertising in it at all. And you've got John Key now saying that he yeah, won't he appear won't on that program yep. before the end of the no. year. David Cunliffe has suggested the same. Yeah, so yeah. is there, if you were in charge of Radio Live, now what would you do now? Well, frankly, they've got to go. If you can't advertise for three hours on your radio station um, because they're there, then they've got to go. And it's as simple as that. You know, there was an amazing showdown with um, Matthew Hooten on yeah. their program the other day. They were appalling in their behaviour, uh, again to him as well, as he tried to voice his displeasure over what they'd said. The only thing they succeeded in doing is maximising attention on Radio Live and their own show. The problem is you can't sell any advertising in it, so it's worthless to MediaWorks. And it's attention for all the wrong reasons. And uh, the Matthew Hooten thing, I happened to be listening, as in the car, mm. and it was as if they were almost sort of joking around with him. He was being absolutely serious. He was taking them to task about what he thought was absolutely unacceptable behaviour. And they ridiculed him, and in the end he said, I'm not putting up with this, I'm leaving the studio. And they kind of were laughing. Well, they threw it, him to out them as well. it was just a big joke. And it's, it's appalling. Uh, some legs yet in this, do you think? Yeah, I think so. I think mm. this is not going to go away for Radio Live. OK, it hasn't been a great week in essence for MediaWorks, the owners of Radio Live. Its TV arm has lost its deal with Fox, which ended its right to play a number of top-rating shows. Socially marginalised, IQ off the charts. Last year he took down the Department of Defence. Listen to what the man has to say. She's vulnerable right now. She could be saying anything to anybody. Find her. I'm not a traitor. Homeland, one of my favourite programmes on the telly. Oh. Also, they've lost The Simpsons. Oh. These are some big names that they've lost, big programmes. Oh, big programmes. And, I mean, I think what we have to explain here to people is that uh, these were what are called output deals. So a studio like Fox provides a couple of big programmes like The Simpsons and a couple of others, but in terms of buying it, you have to buy ten other shows. And those other shows are kind of also rands, but you buy them as a, as a bulk deal. And I think the problem here is that some of those also rands have been used to um, for off-peak times and for TV uh, for four. Um, but I think losing some of those big things isn't necessarily the end of the world for them because they already buy Graham Norton as a standalone show and I think hopefully it will, will allow them to use some of the money that was tied up in that and, and for local programming and maybe we're seeing a real shift here. Maybe the old model of buying big output deals is broken and uh, TV3 uh, are not going to follow it and I suspect TVNZ will be pretty happy because they've been locked into these kind of deals before and they work for the studios 
much more than they work for the broadcaster. So I'm, I'm kind of picking that it might actually be not such bad news for TV3 that everyone is trying to make it out to be. Well, you think the problem there is, though, if they're going in on and effectively the spot market, right, they're going yep. to bid for Homeland yep. uh, TV3, they'll be, they'll be up against um, Sky and Prime, they'll be up against uh, TVNZ as well. And um, both Sky, Prime and uh, TVNZ have much deeper pockets, frankly, uh, than TV3 has at the moment. So I think they're going to find it really hard to get quality product. Well, I guess they're backing their programmers that, that, and they've got some stuff there. And I mean, if you look at what they were doing on, we talked about this last week on Friday night, is now pretty much, they, they own Friday night. Um, and not a lot of that stuff was content deals. So mm. I don't know. I think it's going to be interesting, but I think... Um, down the track, we might look back at this and go, hey, um, it looked like a disaster at the time, but it's not. And I think, you know, they've got Julie Christie in there. I was just there, going to say, one name and, and, you know, hello, it's not quite Touchdown TV3, but we are seeing the influence of Julie Christie, and she's a master or mistress at making uh, these brilliant uh, um, reality shows, which are not all that expensive to make, I don't think. And maybe some of this extra money will mean more local programming, and that could be good. And I guess bringing in more of a commercial arm, like we saw with the block, you know, with yeah. a lot of product placement and things, maybe that's something more that we'll, you know, see. But it does throw into question, doesn't it, uh, Channel 4, because that really is one of the biggest losers here, isn't it, with yeah. this output deal? Well, in the sense that um, it, it ran all the dross product that, frankly, TV3 didn't want. Um, what I, I keep hearing is that the new board of TV uh, or Media Works is actually looking for other things that it could do with, uh, with 4. Um, and I'm sure, you know, Julie Christie would have uh, plenty of ideas about how she'd like to see 4 run and yeah. what it could be. Indeed, I'm sure she does. Now, we've talked about 100% pure New Zealand before. Now we have the New Zealand story. This was developed by Tourism New Zealand, uh, Trade and Enterprise and Education New Zealand. Where nature inspires incredible thinking. Where ingenuity drives innovation. Where big ideas are born every day and new technologies are perfected. Where the impossible becomes real. Well, this looks pretty fabulous, David. What's this all about? Well, I've got to declare an interest of then. Um, my agency looks after the Tourism New Zealand um, campaign at the moment, at the 100% Pure. We weren't the architects of it, but we have uh, been looking after it for the last couple of years. And I think, to a degree, this is because that's been so successful that by default, even though it's a tourism campaign, it's not designed to be the country's campaign, people have suggested that it is almost the campaign that defines New Zealand. So this is an attempt to broaden it out and to say it's not just 100% Pure, we're a country that has a lot more than just brilliant landscapes. And they've used the theme open spaces, open hearts open minds and they're wanting to bring in other aspects of our character like our our, um, our, our cleverness, our, our friendliness, they want to invest, put a bit more Maori culture into it and they want to put in some of the things that are I guess broader but it's, it's designed for trade and enterprise and for government uh, initiatives to go up and, and, and Get more business, Please. so it's a, it's a sort of a backdrop to it. Well, it could, it could be it could be useful. It could be useful for exporters. I mean, you know, to have yeah, that kind of backup. But I just thought the creative in that was pretty bland. But never mind. Oh. Oh, I, I, I wouldn't yep. be able to comment. That no, one, you yeah. couldn't possibly. But couldn't what you possibly. can comment is, is that uh, finally Wellington oh. has a new look logo, being criticised yes. for the colour, for looking like a church cross, for not showing Wellington's diversity, and for not being creative. It hasn't really been a great deal of good said about it, to be honest. <laughs> no. <laughs> I quite like yellow, although it is a bit pack and save, isn't it? It is, it is. You need to stick, man. $24,000 for that. If you're a Wellington ratepayer, <laughs> don't stand yeah, for now it. Now look, Bill, yeah, they probably did 15 versions before they got that one approved. It was probably approved by a committee or something yes. in Wellington. So I don't have I don't have too much of a problem with the 24 grand. It was probably cheap. What I think is a bit of a problem. Look, the, the absolutely positively Wellington started in 1991. Yep. It was started by my old agency, and it was brilliant because Wellington at that point had a bit of a inferiority complex. You know, yes. that we were all Jaffers and they were all. You know, boring, and so being <laughs> being absolutely positively Wellington worked its worked its butt off. It was really good. Yeah. This new expression of it. I think has kind of slightly missed the mark. Do you know, I, I Bill, Bill thinks it looks like a, an ad for the Destiny Church, um, <laughs> which I'm, I, I think is taking it a wee bit far. Uh, a merger between Destiny's Church and, and, uh, Pack and, Pack and, Save. and Save. I have to say, 
and it, maybe this says more about me than the, than the ad. It took me a while to realise that it was a plus sign. Well, <laughs> you know, yeah. the absolutely it isn't positively. actually. It doesn't actually look like a plus no, sign. It's no, it's it just sign. looks like a church cross or something. I mean, mm. it's just dreadful. The, the religious capital of the country, mm. Wellington. There we go, and yeah. it's trademarked as well. Yes. How can no. you trademark a T? In effect, I mean, that's bizarre. Mm, well, I don't know. I think we just leave that one. To, Let's uh, just leave that see what one happens. there. They have a problem, though, don't they? I mean, remember the big bizarre uh, controversy about Wellywood? Yeah. What is it about Wellington and logos that they have? Uh, they good. get very exercised. It's it shows good. they don't have a lot to do down there. Oh dear, David Bolden and Bill Ralston, thank you both.